All right, Mark Schmood is in the house. Yeah. How you doing, Rich? I'm good. How you doing, my man? I'm doing good. All right. Hanging in there. Yeah. Like I was saying, um, the last time I saw you was at Old Town in Orlando, Florida. You thought I was living in California. You were living, I think, in Chicago. And then out of a fluke, we ran into each other. Exactly. What are the that odds? Was so, that was such a surprise. <laughs> I know. I just, I actually <laughs> saw, I saw behind you taking the photos and I said, that's, I ran to catch you. I said, I think that's my buddy Mark because you're so tall. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm at yeah. that. So my dad loves going to those car shows. So I was there. He enters his car into the show all the time. I don't know if you've ever seen it. What does he have? He's got a 1980 Golden Zimmer Spirit. Uh, I don't know if you know it. It kind of oh, looks like a Duesenberg. It's white. I've posted YouTube. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, – I, I, you're such a unique person, what you do, and that's why I definitely want to have you a guest. Uh, we met well, many, thank you. Yeah, we met almost 20 years ago uh, with one of my films, Insanity, I think around 2002. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize it was that long ago, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was shooting a period piece in the city. Uh, and then I needed a makeup artist to make, you know, obviously for makeup because I wanted to do all these different things. We had a shootout and I definitely wanted to hire a, you know, an unbelievable makeup artist. And I found you, I can't remember how, and what was interesting is you and my cousin, who's an editor as well at the time for, <laughs> Broadview Media always worked together. Yeah. It was a fluke. Yeah, I know. I forgot about that connection. Yeah. What was interesting with you is you came to meet me even before we, I, you know, we ever did anything. I said, I'm going to be in Chicago. I got to go. I'm looking at locations. And you said, where are you looking at? And I said, here. You just kind of popped up. Like, remember? Yeah. you were, And then I met you that Yeah. Night. Yeah. And then I well, hired I you. I and. Yeah. So let's start with you. How do you end up becoming a professional makeup artist? How did this even begin? Well, actually, my parents took me to Universal Studios back when I was younger. Orlando got, or California? Um, it was California for that one. Okay. And I got to see the behind-the-scenes special effects stuff. Mm -hmm. So that got me really interested in it. And But I've been to both Universal's and seeing all the, the cool stuff there. But that got me interested in doing makeup and special effects. And I went to school for art, and then I brought it up into makeup and special effects stuff too. So do you went to school for that specifically? I went to Columbia College in Chicago, and I took all the makeup courses that they had. They actually created a couple classes for me and one of their students because we really wanted to do everything in the makeup field there. What year is this? Going back to the 80s? Late 80s, early 90s? I was there 91 to 93. Oh my goodness. So Columbia, uh, that, that's an amazing school in Chicago. Um, they had, who taught you then? If, like, if there was only a couple students, who was there to teach you? Um, his name was Tom Eula. He was a makeup artist in the Chicago area. Um, he always played Scrooge for the uh, Christmas story. Oh, okay. Or Christmas Carol, I mean, um, at the theaters. I guess. But he was, a, he was an awesome makeup artist, and he was our instructor for the whole thing. And how many years were you there? Two and a half. And then where'd you go to? I ended up... Moving to Orlando in 1994, and I went to the Joe Blasco Makeup Center in Orlando there. I got you. Those are the pictures I've seen in the past. Yeah. So yeah. from there, you went. did you work for Universal Studios for a while? Um, technically, I did work for Universal. Yes, I was there for Halloween Horror Nights. Okay. And unfortunately, I didn't actually get to get in as a makeup artist. They already had somebody. Yeah. So I was just a character. But 
I got gotcha. you. Hey, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, yeah. It's, in Orlando, it's competitive. People don't realize, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you were doing Halloween Horror Nights. And then um, I, that ended, of course, because Halloween was over. Okay. Um, but I also worked doing scenic work. So I was working on different sets and stuff like that in Orlando. And so I did that for a while. And I got to work at some of the different studios, like Universal. I got to do some work at Disney MGM. And then I actually got in with Disney in the park. And then also got into Disney in the scenic shop. So it was kind of funny. If I worked in the scenic shop, I had to take a leave of absence from Disney to work at Disney. I got you. Were you at Magic but, Kingdom, you're saying, or at MGM? Which one? I was at MGM. I was a. I ended up being an attractions host at MGM, and then I got into the scenic shop at MGM also. Oh, so I it was working two different things. So some weeks I actually managed to somehow do both. That's crazy. So why yeah, it did, really was. How many years did you do that? I was in Orlando for two years, and it seemed like all the work there just dried up. Yeah, now you're talking the, uh, what is this, the mid-90s when they still had the studios there, correct? And they were doing something? Yeah, I was there 94 to 96. Right, and then because people were still, we even had an office there with my entertainment lawyer when I was doing my films. I was filming in Chicago, but our offices that we shared uh, with him was in Universal Studios. Okay, they took a lot of those studios, as you know, and they made them into for Halloween Horror Nights, haunted houses, or they turned them just right. literally into office space. Uh, right. Because they used, well, they used to shoot their Super Superboy, they Swamp Thing, if I'm not mistaken, as far as series goes. Uh, uh, they also shot Sequest there. Oh, Sequest, right. And then that all dried up. Yeah. Um, which is quite interesting. A lot of things back then started to go actually back to Chicago a little bit, Toronto and many other areas. Yes. Uh, and then Georgia kind of took over really in the, you know, in the last decade or whatever you want to say, they've really made their Yes. Own. So you left Orlando. Where'd you go to from there? I went back to Chicago. Okay. Now what were you mainly doing? So that's where you, I think hooked up with my cousin at Broadview media at that time. Probably. Right? Yes. And um, I was doing both. I was doing makeup and doing scenic work. So whatever, I was just freelancing. So whatever I could get, I would take. When you say scenic, you're talking about set, set decoration? Uh, set backdrop? decoration, doing backdrops for um, a TV show or whatever, or a film, or just backdrop in general for... Um, for a restaurant or something like that, doing mural work, doing specialty paint work. Do you know my cousin, Angel Fedigato? I'm going to actually be doing a podcast with her. Uh, do you know her at all? She does a lot, set, a lot of set decorating for a lot of the shows. Not offhand, but I would definitely like to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to connect you with her. And then my Aunt Kathy Fedigato, she's one of the top hairstylists for all the shows too. She's been in it her entire life. Yes, uh, I, I do one. know of your and Kathy, yes. Oh, yeah, she worked with me with you. She was yes. doing the hair, that's right. So, right. Um, a lot, so, not a ton, but a bunch of my family members grew up in the, uh, the film industry. My cousins, uh, including Angel, my cousin Joe's still a painter, my uncle. Uh, some of my other cousins still do hair for the films. So, um, I, you know, I had a... Uh, the Credidio family, who was wonderful, Johnny Credidio, he was like my uncle. Uh, we used to go visit the sets when we were young. I'm familiar with him, too. I've yeah. worked with him, too. Yeah, so though that's actually my aunt uh, married in our family, and that's her brother. So the Credidios, and I grew up with her sister. Um, okay. Yeah, so, you know, right by Austin and Roosevelt, the studio. That's the family. Yes. That's them. And then I grew up with Johnny and Joey Credidio, great guys. Uh, I even went to school with uh, Joey. We both went to St. Joe's. So, um, what the hell am I doing? I'm talking about myself here. But, what, but anyways, <laughs> you ended up bouncing between, um, if I'm not mistaken, some of them studios, right? Or working yes. there. 
Um, I got to work with credit at the Credidios on a couple things, and uh, then it just kind of dried up with them. Yeah, and then it's hot and cold, hot and cold. Yeah. Times, you know the film industry there, right? Oh yeah, I know. It's kind of ironic. I moved to Orlando because it was known as Hollywood East. <laughs> I got there, and all the stuff went back to Chicago. Yeah, tax incentives, and I even went back to Chicago to do my films, and they were. Uh, it's hot here, as you know, Florida. I think. Yeah. Uh, it just wasn't its time. I, Georgia just picked up steam and they've really been rolling with it. Again, I'm not sh- uh, I have a close friend of mine, Mark Simon, who has his own production company there. One of my writing partners, I did a podcast, Vanessa's there. She hosts the um, Women's Horror Film Festival, which is really picking up steam. I think they're on their third year. Oh, cool. Uh, you can connect with her as well. I just did a podcast and posted it yesterday. Uh, but now you went back to Chicago I know it had its, you know, ups and downs, obviously. Were you ever going to right. Toronto or anywhere else for work? Uh, I never got to go to Toronto. I have, I've been all over. I've lived in Wisconsin. I've lived in Indiana. I've lived in Illinois. I've lived in Florida. And I was actually just recently trying for L.A. Mm-hmm. and couldn't find anything that I could even remotely afford. Mm-hmm. And the fire broke out while I was there. Mm-hmm. And then I just, I went to Atlanta and just got back about a month ago and found a place. I was trying to get a place and get a job and I couldn't get the place because I didn't have a job and I can't get a job because I don't have a place. Right. Yeah. The film and television industry. <laughs> this is kind of <laughs> what a lot of it's about. People think it's all glamorized, right? Right. But you've really been more of an independent artist. You never like really, I mean, besides working at the parks, but you never went and tried to really go the studio route because I did independent films. I never went the studio route, obviously. But why did you not try going the studio um, or did you try and you just? Oh, I have. Okay. I have and a lot of them have their own people. Sure. So it's not like they are just looking for people. They either have people that come in for the shows that they use so, you know, it's like when they film some, a certain movie or show, they bring their own crew in. So it's not like they actually needed another person there. Sure. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to connect in Chicago with some uh, who, ran, who was involved with SAG and AFTRA and who was working at the Chicago Film Office. They were wonderful to me. And, awesome. you know, I, I tell people a lot of times, film students, even my daughter, if she wanted to go to film school, I go, truthfully, you're going to have to probably go to LA and start at the earliest time possible, but it's really about networking, right? Because if you go right. to school there, you all graduate, you kind of can even intern, you can kind of funnel your way into different areas where say, for instance, someone like you, you go to school in Chicago, you basically, you know what I mean? You, there's only so much work being done there. Right. I'm just right. And then where most of the work, I'm not saying it's all being done in LA or New York or wherever, Georgia. Um, But if you can start in a place where you can grow and mainly intern is what I'm trying to say, or start making those connections when you're younger at a place where there's tons of work being done, I think is the key to a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, You're, you were kind of an outsider in Chicago trying to make it in LA or Florida, right? After you get your degree, it's hard to break in yeah. because like anything else, um, you're an outsider. Right. So what are some of the projects? Uh, now I see you, you're always, you know, cause Chicago's still doing a lot of filming with television. Obviously it's slowed down now cause of Corona. Right. You seem to be doing some acting or some stand in some fill in some extra work. Yeah, I've been doing extra work on the Chicago shows. I've been on all of them. I've been in some of the movies that have been shot here lately. Um, I love it. I love being on set. Mm -hmm. And if I can't get on set one way, I'll get on set another. Can you go through, because I don't watch any Chicago shows, even though my cousins, like I told you, my aunt, a lot of family members work on them. And I get to visit the set when I go there sometimes. Because there's, first of all, there's two studios still, right? What's the Greek guy that I talked to? What's the Greek owned one? What's that called? The big one? Uh, Cinespace. What's it called? 
There's one at Cinespace. That's yeah, where they Cinespace. film most of the Chicago movies. Yeah. Right. And then there's Credidio Studio. What's that? Chicago Studio or Studio Chicago? Chicago Studio City. That's right. Chicago Studio. Yeah, because we grew up going there. My grandmother lived right behind there on Monitor Street. Literally okay. one block from there. So what I was going to say to you is what shows, just if someone's listening to this, I know there's so many shows, but what is, I don't know, I don't know the name of all of them. I used to know Chicago Code, okay. but didn't that get canceled? Or am I, am I behind in the times? There's the fire. Um, the ones I have worked on are Chicago Fire, Chicago Med, Chicago PD, and they did one season of Chicago Justice, and I worked on that one a lot. But the last two seasons, I've been a fireman in the house, in the, in the firehouse there. Okay. So, um, or if they shoot at Molly's or something like that for, a, you know, like an after work kind of thing, I've been an extra in there. So it's kind of cool because I know I'm going to the set. I don't have to go to some location somewhere. And... Pretty much, well, at least when I'm in the firehouse, I know what my uniform is because they have it for me. Right. What is somebody uh, getting paid to be an extra right now in Chicago? Or, or what is it? You're not involved with the union, are you? Or Because when I had extras, I didn't honestly pay nope. them. So what do you get, a flat rate, and you got to be there it's for, a, what, 12 hours a day? I don't know. The, what's it's the, a flat rate for eight hours and time and a half after that. And usually you make your money after time and a half, right? Like yeah. Most. And then it goes double time, if I'm not mistaken, if it keeps going? I've never been there that long. Okay. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Um, I've worked on Empire a couple times, and we did 17 and 18-hour days. Um, but there's still stayed time and a half at that point. You know, my cousin Angel, the one I'm going to do a podcast, what I was telling you about, I went the day before Thanksgiving. We were in town. I took both of my daughters to Cinespace. Is that what it was called? Mm -hmm. And she took me on a private tour. She's like, come here, because we were watching. Uh, I, li I liked that show uh, when it was first coming out. So uh, my daughter really loved it. So we got to do, she took us on a tour through it, right? So first the show was ending. One of the Chicago shows was shooting. We all ate together. We had like lunch together. Because do you know Robert Doherty? He's another one who does the catering. Okay. So he's like my cousin, that, you know. So we went in... Um, went and had lunch with that crew and then she took us on a private tour through the empire nightclub because it's built right in there oh yes you know the tunnel and that and all that but they didn't know we were in there and they shut the studio down we got locked <laughs> in there and they shut all the lights out it went pitch black we had to put our phones on we're laughing she had to call security and security came, She's then they apologized or whatever. And she says, oh, no, we'll get the hell out of here. I was going to show my cousin the whole studio, but I said, no, we'll, we'll get out of here. Uh, but it was really amazing. That That's a really cool, uh, you know, story. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. It's huge, all the sets. And then they were showing all the different rooms of Empire that they use. Uh, yeah. I would love to get to take a tour there and actually get to see more of it, you know. Yeah, it was really cool. It was, I got to say, um, yeah, if I ever go there, you got to meet up with me and she'll take us, you know, wherever the hell we want to go in that place. They're wonderful there. And let me know when. <laughs> my uncle's like the Greek president of uh, the president of the Greek council. So he's very good friends with the owners of the studio. And I've even had conversations with them as well when I was going to make my a feature film. Uh, I ended up not doing it there, but they were very gracious and very kind over there. Uh, if we didn't oh, do it at Cordidio Studio, it was, it was either, I'd probably go with my family, but right. if, if they were booked or whatever the case may be, we couldn't work it out. Right. So what are some projects makeup wise? Like I'm going to get into some other stuff. I'm going to ask you about body art, body painting, because that seemed like one of your specialties, right? Yes. Uh, but before we get into that, what actually, what films or TV that you've done makeup on, what have you worked on? Um, I've done a bunch of independent films. Uh, I've done, let's see, um, Time Served. That was actually uh, through Credidio. Okay. And that was a prison movie. We shot that in and around Joliet in Chicago. Okay. Uh, I worked on a movie called To Kill a Killer. Okay. Uh, that was also shot in and around Chicago area. Um, the coroner, um, 
several other independent little feature things. Sure. I just did makeup on a movie called Invictus. Okay. I did some special effects makeup on that. And that's actually hopefully going to Sundance, assuming oh, nice. things can happen at Sundance. Yeah, that's true. It's a, it's a ways away, so you may be safe on that one, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's cool. And, you know, like I was just going to bring up, uh, or like I mentioned earlier, you do body art. Is that for, what do you do that for? Festivals, events? Because you have these women and guys, but a lot of women I know that are full nude. You know, they're nude. Right. Uh, and you you do the body art. For them. How did, like, how did you get involved with that? And obviously, I probably know why you got involved with that. <laughs> but why did you, uh, you took on that endeavor? But I see you doing different events for people. Is that for, what is that for? Festivals? What is that? Um, I actually got into it for photography. Okay. Um, I got into it because it's art. And doing body paint is actually making living, breathing, moving art. Yeah. And it's really kind of cool to see something literally be alive and move around and be able to walk and talk and whatever. And, but it's artwork. Right. And um, I've done some events at some clubs. I've done some things for photo shoots, um, different things like that. And I love doing that. I really want to be able to do more. Yeah, that was a. It seemed like that was a really hot trend for a while. I don't see it as maybe they're still doing it, but for a while it seemed like magazines and a lot of there's, things were really. They're still working. doing it, definitely. Yeah. Um, mainstream media just doesn't use it too much, just because of the nature of what it is. Sure. But um, it's still very popular. Of course. How's so? And you also do photography, right? Yeah, that's one of your passions as well. Do you? Uh, what do you do with a lot of your photos, or what are you doing with that besides, you know, just taking photos like everyone else? Um, I'm starting to do shoot. Well, I've been starting to do shoots of my own, just because um, I enjoy it. I've worked with a lot of different photographers and had opportunity to kind of learn as I go along, and. Um, also because sometimes I hate to say it, but, um, I'm guaranteed that I'll actually get pictures if I shoot it myself. Right. Of course. Yeah. Cause I even saw you. Not take a picture of the commercial. Oh, yeah. what did you say? Go ahead. I said not to say that I don't get pictures all the time from different photographers, but you know, sometimes I'll come up with a, a shot or something that they wouldn't have done and have something totally different. Yeah, that's, yeah. And I saw too, like sometimes you, you can duplicate certain art. So like say Avatar, that picture that you did of those people, like you created Avatar, yes. which is amazing. What, so yes. what did you do that for? Like, where was that at? Is that just your own personal <laughs> thing or is it for Halloween? What you do? I see. No, you. actually. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I just see um, you do a lot of specialty things with people. And I don't know, is that an event again? Is that a festival? Is that a convention? What, what are all these things? Cause you can duplicate things amazingly, right? Like avatar or characters. Yes. Well, the avatar was actually done to promote my model friend and me to just get it out there and look what, look at us kind of thing. Right. And it, it kind of has made a um, a talking point. That's for sure. You know, people do talk about the avatar. Oh, that one's amazing. What about some of the other ones you've done? Who have you done? I've seen a bunch, but you tell me from film um, or TV. Nothing body paint for film and TV really, but like I said, it's mostly photography stuff. No, no, I'm um, sorry. I mean characters that you've done. So you've done oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. What other characters have you mastered? Um, I have done the makeup of the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland. Gotcha. I've done Cat in the Hat. I've done Puss in Boots. I've done Edward Scissorhands. I've done... Um, 
crazy. Uncle Fester from Adam's Family. Right. Um, a lot of different characters like that. Just fun, different characters. Uh, just to do something fun and creative. Yeah, you know, Mark, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna tell you. I've always, as long as I've known you, you're just always such a like an honest guy. With the situation you were in, you never tried to. Um, you know, you you come at the industry from an honest approach, right? The struggles, mm-hmm. the ups and downs, right? Uh, yes. You know, you you're honest to talk about that is what I should say because I think a lot of people try to har- uh, hide, and they also they're not open enough to try different things and evolve. Like a lot right. of maybe a makeup artist wouldn't want to be a stand-in that day or be an extra, right? You right. you truly love the industry of entertainment. I think you love makeup, photography, cinema photography, uh, set decoration, obviously, and and everything in between. You're really loyal to that that industry. Yeah. Right. Yes. I mean, more than anyone else I know, uh, to a certain degree. It as far as how about an independent makeup artist? Because most guys wouldn't survive the way you did. And I think, right. I think you deserve a lot of credit for that, honestly. I'm not just saying that. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you very I, much. I've seen your struggle over the years. And even me, I had to take a long break. I'm like, I can't. I got exhausted from the industry. People don't realize oh, yeah. how, how the ups and downs emotionally that it takes and also the finances that it takes. And people, I think, think everybody uh, in the industry makes a ton of money when that is far from the truth. Oh, that is so far from the truth. (laughs) The struggles. I mean, everybody struggles in their life, but it's just a very competitive uh, industry. And even someone like yourself who's very talented, who could do very unique things that most people can't do, it's still not easy to find a job or be consistent in that profession. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because how many years have you been in it now? So, About 25. Jesus. What's, what's kind of the next move for you? Um, so you're talking about coming to Georgia. Um, what do you think the future for you lies? I'm not even, besides the coronavirus, put that aside. But I'm just saying in general, in this business, do you think you could keep going the way you're going and survive? Or I think I need to actually get, something more serious going one of my things that i wanted to do is work at universal in the makeup department orlando and again or la it would probably be orlando yeah okay um but the problem is i don't know exactly who to try to contact on that yeah i used to know a lot of people in the industry uh i a lot of them leave, as you know, they evolve, they go to corporate, they just disappear, right? Right. Because uh, some of my, my close friend used to uh, be the original Beetlejuice there. And then he actually, a good friend, he went on to manage in sync. I'm just using for an example, even like Joey really? Fatone. Oh, wow. yeah, jo- yeah, Joey Fatone used to work at Universal Studio. He was a werewolf. My close buddy, Joey Pizzani, who's hilarious, worked at Universal for years. He left. But a lot of people, is very transit, the park industry, regardless. Of oh, yeah. Industry what level you're on, you know, where you're at. Right. Um, I have to look into that for you. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. I do think I know, I think I might have a couple connections through them. Um, but that's, like I said, it's very, uh, I'm just not in, it, my step aunt used to be the number one water skier in the world. And she started the water skiing uh, thing in SeaWorld in Ohio. And then, then when she moved it to Orlando, she was like the top skier there. She's in Jaws 3. So I was able at a young age to hang out with her at SeaWorld. Oh, wow. She knew everybody in the industry. Disney, uh, Universal didn't exist at that point in time. Um, Cypress right. Gardens did. So she would bounce between Universal and Cypress Gardens. Um, but I think eventually, the thing, my friend was Tarzan, right? At Disney. He was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, he, I think, went to Hong Kong. But he was an he was unbelievable athlete and people, as you know, a lot of times in Orlando too, if they get a certain type of job, they don't leave it. Right. And then there's somebody always in line that's been there a long time before you and before you that kind of want to go in that. He went, like I said, to another country to become Tarzan, even though he may have, he was just as good as the Tarzan in Orlando. Right. Right. But there's waiting list, as you know, for certain, I mean, they audition you and stuff, but oh yeah, it's so competitive. And again, it's kind of who, you know, so exactly. 
it's a lot of these people who are lifers that have been in this industry for 10, 20 years, all buddies, and they bounce between all the parks doing different things. And um, maybe if you came here and you were just more consistent, maybe stayed longer, maybe I'm just saying, and right. it would work out better for you. Yeah, um, I, I've lived in Orlando before. I love it there. I love the weather. Yeah. Uh, you know, here we have – our seasons are different here in Chicago than you get in Florida. Yeah. We we still have four seasons, but we have winter, still winter. Yes, it's still winter and construction. <laughs> yeah, you're not kidding. Yeah, and Orlando's changed. I don't know when the last time you were here. I think the last time I saw you may have been like five, seven years ago. I can't even remember. But last time I was there was 2012. There you go. It, I didn't even realize it was that long ago. But it's, it's really had a huge explosion the last five years. But now with Corona, I have no idea what the future of these oh, industries yeah. are going to be in Orlando, especially when you're dealing with thousands upon thousands of people, 75 million tourists coming here. Uh, I don't know how they're going to even keep the parks clean, how they're going to – I don't know how that, all that's going to work now. I don't know. If they know. Gonna, yeah. Are they going to regulate how many people can actually come in? All those different types of things, I think, are going to maybe one change. person at a time. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? All right, man. Well, thanks for being a guest. I definitely wanted to get your voice out there. And if people, where can they find you? I know Facebook and all that stuff, but uh, well, my website is www.marksartisticcreations.com. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You got to check his stuff out. I mean, you do some amazing things and you, like I said, you're a lifer. Uh, you've put so much time and effort into this industry on so many different levels and you're, you're talented as hell, man. You just, I think you're like one of, like a lot of people I know, uh, you just need that break, right? Exactly. I mean, truthfully. If I can just get the break, I can run from there. Yeah, absolutely. And you're so willing to be uh, taught or learn or you, Talk about the opposite of a prima donna. You will start on the bottom and work your way up. Right? Exactly. <laughs> right? You're yeah. not uh, some, uh, some guy that has all these different issues or whatever. All right, my man. That's all I got for you. Thanks again, man. It's great to see your Thank face. Thank you. Rich. Talk great to you. Great to see you, too. Yeah. Maybe we're running into each other. Like I said, you come to Orlando, you let me know. I'll check. Okay. Out. Stay on top of me regarding that Orlando stuff. Um, okay. I don't know who I, I'd have to really research that. Cause like I said, that one's a tough one. But, uh, when I come to Chicago, I'm usually just drowned with family members, friends, and I just get slammed. It's really hard. When oh, I, I understand totally. So that one's a tough one, but yeah. And I'm going to, uh, if you want to go on my Facebook, look up my cousin, Angel Fedigato. She's on there and hit her up and hit her with a message and say, you know, um, she's wonderful. She'd love to connect with you. So, okay. All right, brother. I'll talk to you later. Thank you very much, Rich. I appreciate it. Uh, no problem. Take care.